This video walks you through the artifacts needed and steps to create virtual machines, before that, I will go through basic terminologies, which will be required to understand in which context I am talking about in few minutes. And also a good refresher if you haven't worked on it in a while. Virtualization is the process of running a virtual instance of a computing system in a layer abstracted from the actual hardware. It refers to running multiple operating systems on a computing system simultaneously. The hypervisor is a program for creating and running virtual machines. There are two class of hypervisor, type 1 and type 2. We will talk about a bit more in next section. A virtual machine is the emulated equivalent of a computing system that runs on top of another system. Types of virtualization. There are two types of virtualization, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is called bare metal, it's a three-layer architecture, where the hypervisor is directly running on the underlying hardware. Whereas type 2 is called hosted system, in this type the hypervisor is running on top of a host operating system. This video will be focusing on installing the virtual machines with type 2. Let's now see what hardware and software, which are used to create the virtual machines. The hardware layer, which can be a Mac machines, any servers or home computer, which is capable of running OS like Mac OS, Windows, or Linux. And for the hypervisor layer, there are multiple softwares out there like VirtualBox. And the final layer to create a virtual machine, again we can use any of the OS like Windows or Linux. The OS directly talking to the hardware is called the host OS, hypervisor layer is also can be called as virtualization layer. And the OS running as virtual machines are called guest OS. Now let's start creating the virtualization layer and the virtual machines. We need to download two software bundles, first we will download the virtual box which is free provided by Oracle. There are also other free providers like VMware Fusion, Parallels etc. For the virtual machines we will use Linux today which is easy to install and set up. Let's download the Ubuntu desktop version. It will take some time based on the network speed, since it's almost 3 gig. The bits are downloaded. Let's install the virtual box. It should be pretty straightforward installation as any other software. Okay, the installation is now successful. Let's launch the virtual box and create a new virtual machine. Give it a name. Select the Ubuntu ISO from the download folder and click Next. This screen, it creates a default username and password. Change if you want to, I am leaving it to default here. But, remember the username and password though for later use. Here you can change your virtual machine's memory or the CPU based on your requirement. I am leaving it to default here too. The next, we can change the storage if required, this one I am changing it to 20 gig and then click next. Review your configuration and click finish. This will start the installation of Ubuntu. The display screen is small, for which you can navigate to the display settings on the virtual machine settings and for now change it to max. It might not be still not enough, but for now we will proceed with this. The installation will take 5 to 10 minutes, I am going to fast forward this, since it's hands-free installation and no manual input is required until it finishes and reboot for login screen. Hope you remember your username and password. While the installation is happening, just want to remind you that we will be using the bridge network for this virtual machine, which will use your host OS, in my case the Mac hardware's Wi-Fi or wired network DHCP IP address to get a IP for the virtual machine. Now the installation is almost complete and it's ready for the login screen. Enter the password provided by default or the one you created manually. First let's see which IP address the virtual machine got, we need terminal app to find it. Looks like the INET tools are not available by default. We need to power off and on to do this. Also let's switch it over to the bridge network, since by default it's set to NAT. This will be easier to reach your virtual machines from anywhere in your network. Go. 
To the settings to change it, now power back on the virtual machine, log in again and open the terminal app to ping www.google.com, you should be able to reach the internet. This is required for two reasons. First, we need to reach the internet to update the Linux and packages. Second, we will need to use our Mac to SSH into the virtual machine. Now enter the su login or use sudo to update the, the Ubuntu package. This will take some times and it might throw some error, retrying the same update will work. Now, we have updated the base of Linux, let's install OpenSSH server, which is required to SSH from Mac to the virtual machine. We will also need the net tools to see the IP address using if config. Now we have the IP address of the virtual machine, we can use the Mac to SSH into. The credentials are same as the one used for the desktop login. We are almost there, couple of important settings and option I will show. We saw that the display is still small, we will change some settings to really look like a normal machine. Again, we need the power of the virtual machine to change the settings. One more quick check in between, we had a SSH session open, let's check that. See that the session is closed, since we powered them off. Now, let's get to the settings and change the user interface to have full screen. Click OK and power on the virtual machine. Since we are going to use the full screen, VirtualBox have a keyboard shortcut to switch back to normal window, in this case the default is Command plus F option will get out of full screen. Wait for the reboot and login. If you notice that the display is still small, one more settings on the Linux to set the resolution. Use the display settings and set it to the resolution you want. Here is I'm selecting the 1920x1080, save the changes and you are good now. With this high resolution, you can now easily use all the web browser and other app which requires a big screen. Now, I am going to switch to normal window by pressing command plus F. Let's see how we can clone and run another virtual machine very easily. Power off the virtual machine and right click on the original virtual machine and click clone. Give a name and click next. You can go with the default storage settings, linked clone option is really not required for normal use case. The clone will take some time based on the original virtual machine disk size and content. Let's verify the settings of the cloned virtual machine, it should match that of the original virtual machine. Now, power on the virtual machine and wait for boot up and login with exact same credentials as the original virtual machines, since the disk is copied fully with OS in the applications. The only difference you will see is the new IP address, since the virtual network card will have new MAC address and DHCP will give new IP. Now, Let's quickly check if the IP address can be sheet into without installing OpenSSH server. Yes, it works. Now, let's power off and uninstall the guest OS. All you have to do is just right click and delete them. It's just so simple, it's like any other application install, launch and remove. Hope this video helped in understanding some basic of virtualization and how to create a virtual machine on your home laptop. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel if you like to watch similar videos and help my channel. Thank you, see you in another video.